let me introduce the basic idea of chain rule okay so chain rule basically focuses on the idea where you've got uh, I really like th thinking of it in a case where you've got like brackets let's say y is equal to and then you have 2 x squared plus a 1 the power 4 in this case uh, chain rule is more like a combination of power rule with something new or extra you understand why it's called a chain rule so you take your whatever is inside the brackets to be your u and then the power 4 okay so the way we basically get to under this is um, the u that you have in this case our u is equal to 2x squared plus a 1 so that can be differentiated so differentiating that it's du dx because we're differentiating u in respect to x we're going to have that 4x and then we can also differentiate the part where we've substituted u so it's y in respect to u so it's dy du and then we've got a 4u and then the power reduced by 1 to the power 3 okay now you've got this and you've got that so if you try to multiply the two there's one thing that is going to be interesting dy du multiplied by du dx so the du's will cancel out you remain with dy dx so in other terms if you multiply the two you are going to get an answer so 4u the power 3 multiplied by 4x you are going to have 16 and then x and then u the power 3 now pull back your u your u is what your u is 2x squared 2x squared plus 1 to the power 3 so that's the result and this is why it's called a chain rule it's a chain okay that's the basic idea using the formula and all that now I like I don't like formulas <laughs> I don't like formulas so now that you know what we're talking about by the way don't forget the answer that's our answer there on the bottom using that we're calling the chain rule so the way you can go about the directory is as follows consider the coefficient that you have there so this is a case where you only have a coefficient but you don't have another function if you do have let's say where there's one if you add maybe 2x squared and then multiply by whatever is there the formula changes doesn't this is now it becomes the product of two different functions making up this function so there you have to apply what we're calling the product rule so review it review it don't for forget about it for now going back to our question so <coughs> the form normal differentiation using the power rule why you take you want to be a coefficient 4 times 1 is a 4 and then maintain what is in the brackets and then reduce the power by 1 which is a 3 now and then multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets that's the only thing that you add multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets the derivative of 2x squared plus 1 becomes 4x and then if you multiply 4x by 4 outside becomes 16x now 2x squared plus 1 remains with the brackets so you've seen that it's not as complicated as the formula the formula takes and wastes a lot of time okay so <coughs> you can actually apply the same idea the combination of chain rule and product rule to answer the other part but let me try to give you other forms of or other things that would require you to apply the chain rule so you can have a case where you have uh, the square root of x to the power 3 plus 6 <coughs> you can also apply the chain rule there to to determine the derivative of such a function so a dy dx becomes now you understand that the square root is as good as adding it the power the power half even if you've got the fourth root you understand that it becomes the power one over four so it shouldn't be a struggle it shouldn't be intimidated when you see such an expression so, ah, i don't know how to differentiate such a function so uh, i don't know why i've written that but this is still y so now the derivative which is y prime or dy dx becomes 
remember the coefficient there is 2 1 now let's take let's make it more interesting let's assume we had the 4 there and then we've got the 4 so 4 times half becomes a 2 and then reduce the power by 1 so half minus 1 is just going to be negative half basic fractions now the thing that we're adding is where we multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets the derivative of what is in the brackets in this case we have 3x to the power 3 plus 6 so it's just going to be 3x squared this time is that gives us 6x squared what's remaining in the brackets we've got x to the power 3 plus 6 to the power negative half we can end there that's still fine I like taking it to the denominator so that we have a positive power so the x to the power 3 plus 6 can go to the denominator so that is now raised to the power half now the power half is as good as putting a square root now so you look to be more understanding of what you're doing if you express an answer like that so that's where you end <coughs> now for the sake of your practice I want you to try out this one y is equal to 1 over I know students when you meet questions that you've never solved you feel like you can't answer it but all the same you know that if you've got something on the denominator part you can just take it to the numerator right and then raise it the, 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 the sign changes becomes negative so all the same there's a one there if you multiply your dy dx becomes negative 3 maintain what is in the brackets reduce the power by 1 it becomes negative 4 multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets which is 2x negative 3 by that it gives us negative 6x maintaining what is in the brackets we can directly take it on the bottom so that the power becomes positive that's our answer there <coughs> uh, the other thing that I want to mention is uh, si there, I know we'll talk about this later on in detail how to handle them and deal with them but for now just know that the derivative of sine x dy dx is just as good as cos cosine of x I want you to know that the derivative of cosine on the other hand gives us negative sine of x so we'll look at more complicated stuff later on the, the, the derivative of tan and all but there's an association of these two what you're dealing with the chain rule so the basic idea behind the derivative of this is you can let whatever is there be your u so y is equal to u and then your u becomes equal to the function itself sine of x now if you say dy du you notice that in this case your u just becomes uh, I think this is wrong <coughs> I've, 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 I've done it in the wrong way um, instead we can say it's this part which becomes u so sine u and then your u becomes equal to x so dy du is now the derivative of of what of sine is cosine so you have cosine of u and then the derivative du dx there becomes just equal to 1 so 1 times cosine of u is just cosine of u now your u is equal to what x so that's the answer in such a case now why am i showing you this i'm showing you this because it becomes more interesting if we add 2x there if we add 2x so if we add 2x this still maintains it still maintains to be cosine of u but this part becomes u is equal to 2x so the u dx becomes 2 so if you multiply you have 2 cosine and then the u is still 2x okay so that's the basic idea there we'll talk about trigonometric differentiation later on in detail now just to end this how do you handle a question where you've the product rule being combined copying the question again x squared multiply by 2x squared plus 1 raised to the power 4 so we have a product rule so I said the product rule maintain the first part as it is <coughs> or differentiate it if you want but I'll maintain it in this I'll, 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 I'll differentiate it in this case derivative of x squared is 2x 
and then the other part should be maintained as it is. So we'll maintain 2x squared plus 1 to the power 4. Now for the next part as we add, we need to differentiate the other one as well. So now, how do you differentiate this? Now you know this is where now the, the chain rule comes in to differentiate this. So I said, consider it as it is. As it is. The coefficient there is a 1. <coughs> so we have 4. Maintain what is in the brackets. Reduce the power by 1. It becomes the power 3. And then multiply by the derivative of what is in the bracket. So the derivative of 2x squared plus 1 is just as good as 4x. And then multiply by the original other part, which is x squared. I hope you are not confused. This becomes 2x. 2x squared plus 1 to the power 4 plus. And then this multiply by that just gives us 16x. Maintaining what is in brackets, we have 2x squared plus 1 to the power 3. Now don't forget that what this is multiplying by the x squared. Okay. So if you multiply with what is in the brackets there, the x squared can just be part of the 16x so it becomes the power 3. But I think that is better off. So you can end there, but I prefer simplifying it further, where you can factor out the 2x since it's common. And then the other part that is common is the 2x squared plus 1. Now to what power? Here we've got a power 4, there we've got the power 3, so we'll get the smallest power, which is 3. So now in the brackets, you remain for the first part. 2x has been taken. There, since it's the power 4, here you've got the power 3. You remain with a single 2x squared plus, plus 1. Plus a 1. And then the other part plus. You, the, if you factor out the 2, two from 16, you remain with 8. Factor out x, you remain with x squared. Okay. The entire part has been taken to the power 3. But I think these are like terms as well. So 8 plus 2 gives us 10. So you remain with 10x squared plus. I think. Did we have a 2 or something? <laughs> Why am I forgetting what was there? Oh, we had a 1. Yeah, so that's our final answer. If this is interesting. This is just interesting. I like it. So that's it about the channel.